It started with a phone call. I was sitting in my living room, sipping on a cup of tea and watching TV when my phone rang. I didn't recognize the number, but I picked up anyway. Hello, I said. There was no response for a few seconds, just static on the other end of the line. I was about to hang up when I heard a faint whisper. 630-296-7536, the voice said. I frowned, not sure what to make of it. What? Who is this? But the line went dead. I stared at my phone for a moment, wondering if it was some kind of prank call. But there was something about the voice on the other end that sent a chill down my spine. It was almost inhuman. Curiosity got the better of me, and I typed the number into my phone's search bar. What I found chilled me to the bone. There were dozens of forum posts, blog entries, and even news articles about the number. It seemed that many people had received a call from the same mysterious entity, and those who called back were never the same again. Some claimed that the number belonged to a sinister organization known as Booth World Industries a group that specialized in custom-made deaths. Others said that the number connected them to the ghost of a murdered man who was seeking revenge on his killer. I didn't know what to believe, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I tried to put it out of my mind and go about my day, but the thought of that whispering voice kept echoing in my head. A few days later, I received another call from the same number. This time I didn't answer, but the voice left a message. Hello, my dear. I hope you're ready for what's to come. I have a special invitation for you. Call me back at your earliest convenience. I deleted the message, feeling more uneasy than ever. What did this entity want from me? And why was it singling me out? Despite my better judgment, I found myself dialing the number. The line rang twice before someone picked up. Hello, I said, my voice shaking. Ah, oh, there you are, the voice said. I've been expecting your call. I have a proposition for you. I listened in silence as the entity explained its offer. It claimed that it could grant me anything I desired, but there was a catch. In exchange for my heart's desire, I would have to perform a service for Boothwold Industries. What kind of service? I asked, although I already knew the answer. Death the voice said simply. We need someone to die, and you're the perfect candidate. I felt a cold sweat break out of my forehead. I can't do that. I won't do that. Ah, uh, but you will, the voice said. You see, we have ways of making people do what we want. And if you refuse, well, Let's just say it won't be pleasant for you. I hung up the phone, feeling sick to my stomach. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't go to the police. They would think I was crazy. And I couldn't ignore the entity's threats, not when I knew it had the power to make good on them. Days turned into weeks, and the entity continued to call me each time offering me more and more tempting deals. But each time, the catch was the same. I would have to perform a service for Booth World Industries, and that service always involved death. I tried to ignore the calls, but they kept coming. I stopped sleeping, stopped eating, stopped living. 
My entire existence revolved around that damn phone number. And then, one day I cracked. It was the middle of the night, and I was sitting in my darkened living room, staring at the phone. The entity had called me again, and I found myself picking up without even thinking. Hello? I said, my voice hoarse. Ah, there you are, the voice said. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten about me. What do you want? I asked, my hand shaking. I want you to do what you promised, the entity said. I want you to perform the service. I can't, I said, tears streaming down my face. I can't kill someone. Please just leave me alone. There was a long pause on the other end of the line, and I thought for a moment that maybe the entity had finally given up on me. But then it spoke again, and its voice was filled with a cruel amusement. Very well, it said. I'll let you off the hook this time. But know this, you can't escape your fate. We will come for you eventually, and when we do, you will have no choice but to serve us. With that, the line went dead. I sat there in the dark for a long time, trembling with fear and despair. I knew that I had sealed my own fate by making that call. The entity would never stop coming for me, and eventually I would have to do its bidding or suffer the consequences. Days turned into weeks, and the entity's calls became less frequent. But the fear never left me. I jumped at every sound, every shadow, every unexpected movement. I knew that I was being hunted, and that there was no escape. And then one day, I received a package in the mail. It was a plain brown box with no return address or markings of any kind. But when I opened it, I knew that my worst fears had come true. Inside the box was a set of instructions, along with a small silver key. The instructions were simple. I was to go to a specific location at a specific time and use the key to unlock a door. Inside that room, I would find my target. I knew what I had to do, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. I sat there staring at the instructions and the key, feeling like a trapped animal. But then there was a knock at my door. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. Who could it be? I hadn't told anyone about the entity or the package or the package, or the instructions. But the knocking continued insistent and urgent. With a shaking hand, I crossed the room and peered through the people, and what I saw made my blood run cold. Standing on my doorstep was a man in a black suit, his face hidden behind a blank white mask. He held a small silver key in his hand, and his eyes seemed to bore into mine. I knew then that there was no escape. The entity had found me, and it was time to pay the price. I don't know what happened next. It's all a blur in my mind, a jumbled mess of fear and pain and confusion. I remember the man in the black suit leading me out of my apartment the sound of his footsteps echoing in the hallway. I remember the cold, damp air on my face as we stepped outside, and the sense of being watched by countless unseen eyes. And then everything went black. The next thing I knew, I was standing in a dimly lit room, surrounded by shadowy figures. In the center of the room was a table, and on that table was a small silver key. 
Welcome, a voice said, and I knew it was the entity. I'm so glad you could join us. I tried to speak, but my throat was dry and constricted. I couldn't move, couldn't even breathe. The entity continued to speak, its voice echoing all around me like the sound of a thousand whispers. It told me what I had to do and how I had to do it. It told me that there was no escape, no way out. And then it gave me the key. I don't remember what happened next. The memory is like a nightmare that I can't shake. A vision of horror that I can't shake. A vision of horror that haunts me even now. But I know that I did what I had to do. That I performed the service for Booth World Industries. And now I'm trapped. Trapped in a nightmare that never ends. Haunted by the whispers of the entity and the screams of its victims. I'm a puppet, a pawn in a game that I can never win. But maybe, just maybe, there's a way out. Maybe there's a way to break free from the entity's hold, to escape its grasp and find some measure of peace. Or maybe I'm just fooling myself. Maybe there's no escape from the horror that awaits me. Maybe I'm doomed to serve the entity to perform its twisted bidding until my dying breath. Maybe, just maybe, the only way out is dead. If you like my story, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video for more and similar stories.